Good evening to one and all present here. I'm Sanya Jaiswal, a student of grade 12, and I'm passionate about design and creativity. I look forward to pursue a career in design engineering. On behalf of the management, staff, and team Dhanak, I welcome you to the opening ceremony of Delhi Public School Whitefields Annual Art and Design Festival, Dhanak 2022. A very warm welcome to our respected principal, Ms. Kamala Bopana, Vice Principal, Ms. Lovely Data Pristi, and our esteemed guests, Ms. Diti Mistry and Ms. Alka Sharma. Dhanak, literally meaning rainbow, is a gala art and design event which was started in 2019 by the design students under the guidance of our extremely talented faculty of design and visual arts department. We crossed some challenging yet successful milestones in this journey. Let's take a walk down memory lane and see how Dhanak has grown from 2019 to 2022. amazing journey. Albert Einstein once said, creativity is seeing what others see and thinking what no one else ever thought. Yes, is bar dhana ke saath hum lekar aaye hain ek adbhud nazara, ek mahatsav jaha kuch sikhenge, kuch sikhayenge aur kuch nahi to rang bhare mahatsav ko dekar anand uthayenge. So here we are with the fourth edition of Dhanak 2022 presenting to you a sneak peek in what's in store for Dhanak 2022. pandemic affected a large number of people and amongst them were artisans. The lockdown forced artisans to close shop, but some others used it as an opportunity to grow their businesses and explore new platforms. Here at Dhanak, we will be providing a platform to some of these small businesses, freelancers and artists the exposure they deserve while encouraging them to grow. This year's theme is sustainable design which focuses on using creativity and innovation in reducing our negative impact on the planet. To commence the event with an interactive session, 
I would like to request our principal ma'am to address the gathering. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the management staff and students of DPS Whitefield, I extend a very warm welcome to our chief guests this evening, uh, Mrs. Diti Mistry and Mrs. Alka Sharma. A very warm welcome to you. Indeed, we are honored to have you with us. And I was just going through what you have done and the uh, esteemed uh, institutions that you all have passed out from. Uh, Diti has passed out from NIFT and uh, Mrs. Alka Sharma has passed out from the Indian Institute of Craft and Design. And here we see how creative you are and how passionate you are for what you're doing because you all have started your career by working with someone else and then you all have branched out on your own and you have your own uh, little uh, ventures that you all are pursuing. And in that way, you are able to uh, sort of enhance your creativity and do what you like best. Um, uh, Diti Mistry is um, of, of accessory um, uh, designer and also Alka Sharma. She, is, uh, she empowers the local craftsmen and she has her own uh, venture where she does block printing. And that is really, I find also very interesting, especially on Indigo fabric, which is my favorite. A very, very warm welcome to both of you. We are really, really honored to have you with us today. And now to go back to our art and craft department. Uh, Danak is a brainchild of our art and craft department started by the HOD of the department, that is uh, Mrs. Shweta Shukla. Uh, we started in 2019. And what has impressed me most and what has, uh, you know, I feel uh, very strongly about that in spite of the pandemic, uh, they continued to have this art and craft festival online. They had various workshops, various competition. And I think the credit has to go to every member of the department, starting with the HOD, Mrs. Shweta Shukla, Aditi, Siddhi, Kalpana, and our new entrant, Anuradha. So for all of them, I really want to place on record the good work they have done. They are just not ordinary class or art teachers. They are passionate about whatever they do. And in spite of all the obstacles and in spite of everything, they have pursued their passion in the way they want to do, and they have got art to come out of the classroom. It is just not confined to the classrooms, but they have gone beyond the classroom, and that is what has made art very interesting. And to, uh, to uh, brief our chief guests, uh, art integration has become a very important uh, 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 curriculum in the CBSC. And they have encouraged us that we have to integrate art in whatever we teach. So from grades 1 to 10, uh, they are supposed, the children are supposed to do art integrated projects. And this is not only uh, visual arts, it's also the performing arts. And uh, in this way, they tell us that we cannot download the admit cards unless you have showed us what art integrated projects you have done over the years. Uh, over the whole year. And for grade 11 and 12, we're supposed to do art integrated teaching and learning process has to be done. And this the CBSC is very, very particular about. So I don't want to take too much of your time, but uh, I wish the Danak team all the very best. I know they will do a superb job as always. And I hope our chief guests would have been able to come and witness some of the events that we have organized for the next uh, six days. Uh, but anyway, a very warm welcome once again to all of you. And I wish the Dunnock team and all the design students the very, very best. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to introduce our guests for today. Our first guest for today Ms. Diti Mistry is an accessory designer and illustrator. 
After graduating from NIF Mumbai in fashion communication, she worked in Ogilvy as an illustrator. She later started her own, own brand called Diti, where she designs and creates handmade accessories for fashion and home, using upcycle fabric and handloom fabric collected from artisans of India. We also have Ms. Alka Sharma, who founded Avarin, Echoes of Rural India in 2008 at Adhaipur. She is from the Indian Institute of Crafts and Design's first batch of graduates. Her aim was to promote and evolve traditional crafts while economically empowering low-income craftspeople and the stakeholders in the value chain. While attempting to revive and sustain the traditional craft of Dabu, a technique of hand-block printing, Avarin takes pride in its specialization of indigo dyeing as well as other natural dyes to provide wider color options to customers. Once again, we welcome you both. Sustainability is the word of the day today. However, have we really understood what sustainability means? I would request Ms. Diti to explain sustainability as any layman should understand. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you so much uh, for having me. It's a really pleasure to um, be here and speak to students. And it's so nice to actually see young students being, you know, taking initiative in sustainability. Like for me, sustainability came really later in life. I mean, I understood the meaning of sustainability much later, but uh, but I realized that actually sustainability was always there. It was being practiced in my home for a really long time. My grandmother, I would see her, you know, stitching cloth bags and, uh, you know, she would be, we would be getting our groceries in those cloth bags. And, uh, you know, the, the grocery, uh, the food which we would be consuming, like, you know, it would not be thrown away until it's like fully consumed. Like, you know, if it's, um, we leave, uh, we kind of not able to eat one meal, like, you know, it would be made into some other dish the next day. So it's not thrown away. So I think the sustainability was always there, but I think the term monology, the whole fanciness has now come now and also the awareness. And it's the, it's the most important thing, which is now there. Um, and for me, I think sustainability is as simple and as basic that so tomorrow we are not shortage of those these resources which we're not taking it for granted, you know. So to do to have a better future and like we don't over consume things with like electricity and cloth, just basic water, energy, so that we have it for tomorrow. And we are like still old, but like, you know, we have it for kids who are there tomorrow. So, yeah, it's as simple for me. Ma'am, can you give us a few more tips on how do we incorporate sustainability into our life? Um, for me, I think it comes from a very small step of like we... For example, we carry cloth bags to grocery stores yes. and um, also, and if we don't have cloth bags, we definitely have some unused cloth in our house. So we would make that cloth, uh, you know, we would make that bag in our homes and we would use it. So automatically we are in that circular cycle. We've already, uh, we have entered that cycle that uh, we have created a cloth bag. We are taking it to the market. We haven't bought plastic from the shopkeeper and taking it, you know, uh, coming back home with that plastic bag. So, and we would be using that cloth bag for a very long time. Um, also, I feel pandemic taught uh, a lot of us to live sustainably you know, to consume less. And uh, we, we kind of uh, started respecting the resources which we took for granted. You know, um, we would be not uh, going to the grocery stores more often. We would not be consuming so many resources as often as we used to. 
and um, i remember during the pandemic me and my mother we started treating these bio enzymes at home and um you know these collecting these vegetable peels and just using jaggery and those peels we would be creating bio enzymes for as uh, for cleaning agents now yeah. you know when we are going to a grocery store we are buying a cleaning agent and as we all know clean, like you know this whole covid really advertised okay covid bacteria and everything so we we started mentally becoming this pressurized okay i have to buy this that all item or that cleaning agent or that cleaning agent um so yeah we started creating this um, cleaning agent at home using uh, um this vegetable peels and uh, we created this bioenzyme and it's acidic in its own natural way and mm. we are mixing it with water and we are using that same water in plants so now i'm not wasting water which is chemically mixed and it's not going into the landfill it's actually going into the plants and it's going into the plants where we are actually growing vegetables and we are eating it so this it's already a cycle which is there in our house and we saw ourselves that we were not we were not uh, requiring those cleaning agents as of like we won't be buying them as often as we used to so that was one of the biggest uh, things which we've started practicing in our homes no i googled a lot about sustainable practices but i didn't come across anyone using the acidifying properties of these biodegradable ways so this was really interesting ma'am thank you i would now request miss alka to take us further into the subject and shed some more light on how her organization has been following sustainability what would be your advice to our upcoming young artists and craftsmen Ma'am, you're not audible. Uh, no, ma'am. Can someone else confirm if they can hear? Me? Oh no, she's not audible. No, yeah, she's not audible. I think she's trying to rejoin. Uh, am I audible now? Yes. Yes. yes So uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Like I'm really grateful to be a part of this. As both of my kids, uh, they are studying in DPS, Udaipur. So I was telling them, and like just to sit and listen. <laughs> so yeah. So as Diti said, so I would agree with Diti. Like it's an uh, it's not a new thing, sustainability. It's a like it it. it is a part of our day to day life it was part of our day to day life and uh, it's uh, uh, like sustainability is like uh, yoga it's 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 like for you seeking for pursuit of balance and harmony and so uh, during our uh, old age like when our ancestors so there was complete harmony there was no pollution like less less pollution and now like as we could see like pandemic has taught us to be more sustainable to be um, like we should be more full of whatever we do so like uh, it's a day to day practice like right from uh, getting up like from brushing your teeth which is also plastic and earlier it used to be neat you know so like every step of your life requires uh, sustainability like uh, 
um, the meaning of sustainability is to achieve mat like optimum results uh, by not wasting anything. So our ancestors have taught this. Uh, so we we practice in our uh, like it is our ethos. Our ethos in the sense like I practice in in our workshop in our day to day life. I like all the artisans. We don't waste anything. We are a zero waste organization. We of the waste fabrics. Uh, so we've taught uh, women. So they are, there are a set of women who make uh, rugs and uh, and whatever uh, smaller fabrics we have. So we make paper out of those. So thoroughly. Ma'am, can you explain a little more how uh, the processing of your organization is and how it promotes sustainability? So uh, basically, we are uh, indigenous. Uh, we practice with um, traditional hand block printers. We started it in Akola. It's a hand block printing uh, uh, cluster in Akola, Chittorgarh. Uh, so we started it in uh, 2008. Uh, we were there for seven years. We took help from Ministry of Textiles. And then mm -hmm. we shifted to um, Udaipur. So we shifted from Chittor to Udaipur. Uh, so now everything is uh, here only. Like we migrated. I migrated with my team. And uh, the whole setup is here. We have a 40,000 square foot uh, land. And uh, we have our, uh, eight indigo diabards and 15 printing tables. Uh, we have our um, designers. Like everything is done in-house. Stitching, uh, fabric, uh, like dispatch right from uh, scratch, like right from printing to dispatch, everything like everything is in-house. Mr. Sharma, I just asked you one question. Uh, yes, can you tell us uh, something about uh, uh, that dabu that which you all use, the mud resist? Uh, so everything is, ma'am, natural. Like we procure uh, mud uh, from lakeside. And uh, we procure it uh, uh, after rains because the mud is very uh, nice. And uh, we we stock it in one room. Like that is precious to us. And uh, uh, we take part of uh, mud and then we mix. Uh, Ma'am, we have no uh, babul ka peed ka paste. In, uh, so we mix uh, that uh, paste in it. And... Uh, it acts as a resistant. So we have to really uh, make very fine paste. Um, Ma'am, uh, ma I wish I, I could have done presentation of the whole process. So we make very fine paste. Uh, like it's a very labor intensive. So it's like a, a cake paste. It's very, and then we sieve it. And then we do very fine mud resist printing. And we uh, take fabric, we print on it. Then we keep it for four to five days. And uh, like the fabric is white and we print it. So it comes, uh, we keep it for four to five days and then we dip dye it in indigo dye bath. Okay, very interesting. Th thorough washing. So uh, everything is uh, natural. Like when, even when we wash, so nothing is uh, chemical. So, so we are not harming the environment and it's good for the skin. Like uh, then, uh, like this, uh, this is where the dabu has been. Yes, so this is white and then we can see it in indigo dabu. So everything else is blue. It's very interesting because yeah, I think about we'll... this mud resist, I was wondering what exactly it was. I mean, to be very honest with you, it's the first time I was hearing about it. So... Uh, it did sound interesting, and it would be lovely if you could do a workshop and show yeah. us one day. Yeah, yeah. You know, Maybe next we... next year she can join us live, <laughs> offline. <laughs> Ma'am, and if Shweta had told me, I would have given a presentation. So pictures and you know videos and uh, yeah, it would have been uh, good for the students. Uh, yeah, because I was reading about it for the first time, and to be very honest with you, and I've always liked the indigo and the block uh, fabric. And when I came across this term as mud resist, I was wondering what it exactly was. So it would be really nice for us and also for the students if you could throw some light on it one day. You could do a workshop with our children. 
doing, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Our vice principal, Ms. Lovely Dada, has been a big supporter of eco-friendly lifestyle, which advocates sustainability. I request ma'am to address the audience and share your views. Good evening, everybody. Um, it's really nice to be back uh, talking about art uh, because um, I really love art and uh, I appreciate all the work that our art department does. Uh, talking about Dhanak, uh, Dhanak is an event that promises a lot of fun and excitement not only for the host, but also for the participants. But it is not all about fun and frolic. Um, there's a lot of hard work, creative, serious creativity involved in it. And there is a message that art is life. And a life, a world without art is simply not worth living. This year's theme is especially close to my heart. It is sustainability. And uh, I have been brought up in a family, a large family, where we had to deal with uh, we had to share all the resources very carefully. So I think uh, sustainability was a part of our life. Like Alka and Diti said, we did not know the word. I did, probably didn't know that uh, we were living a sustainable life. But those habits were, you know, uh, imbibed in us by our parents. Right from small, small things like not uh, wasting paper, uh, using the pencil right till the end, you know, until it became a small bit and you can't hold it anymore. Even then, we were taught to use a pen cap, uh, you know, extra pen cap that we used to collect and used to put it in the pencil and use the pencil. So, um, and my father used to tell me that um, Gandhiji used to do that. So that was, uh, you know, something we used to follow. Paper, even our notebooks uh, at the end of the year when, you know, we went to the next class, uh, the notebooks were not thrown without checking whether there are any more empty pages, pages that were not used. And we used to tear off all those pages and make some notebooks so you could use them for a you know, rough note or for practice of math sums and all that. So I think sustainability is a very uh, uh, integral part of our life. Uh, at the rapid pace that we are depleting the resources of the world and uh, you know we are picking up everything that we uh, see around us, um, a sustainable way of life is the only sensible way of life now. Now, it's not just a fashion, uh, it's a fad but it is uh, the need of the hour, right? And uh, we must be more mindful of our actions. We must think about how we, what we're doing, uh, whether we're wasting energy, or whether we are, um, you know, even in the fashion industry, I think sustainable fashion is um, something that we must follow. There is no harm in uh, reusing the clothes that you have. And I think uh, recently I had read somewhere that even celebrities have now uh, started uh, wearing the clothes, the same clothes, you know, uh, to some uh, to, uh, different um, events. Earlier, we used to hear celebrities never repeat their clothes, but now I think they're also becoming aware of sustainability and they are doing this. So it's really great to be talking about art and sustainability. And um, I hope everybody enjoys being part of Dhanak 2022. Ma'am, what's really interesting is all of y'all talked about sustainability and how y'all in your childhood uh, incorporated these practices in your life and then now I'm slowly comparing it to our generation where we have exploited all our resources. My notebooks are, half of them are blank but I keep buying new ones and I even notice in the design room we waste a lot of and only this past week is when we've I've realized that we've uh, it was one of our teacher's birthdays and she gave us chocolates and we had no clue what to put. We were making this hat. So we took out the wrappers and we added it to the hat and then it, started, it looked so beautiful. So I personally feel that our generation needs a greater, they need uh, some awakening as to how this is the need of the hour, as you mentioned, and uh, how we should not exploit our resources. Ma'am, can you also talk about how can we incorporate sustainability in school? Um, you're directing the question to me, Sanya? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I think sustainability in school is very, very important. We must make the children aware that uh, they need to preserve the things that they use, that they shouldn't be so careless about. You know, when I walk around the school, I see children uh, wasting paper, wasting water, even when they're filling up their water bottles, throwing water at each other, you know, on each other. And... Um, the, throwing away the pens at the end of the day when the uh, aunties are cleaning the rooms, I see a lot of uh, pencils which are really in good shape and, you know, they could, they could be used. Erasers uh, all lying all over the place. And uh, I give a strict um, uh, instruction to the aunties that pick them up and keep them on the table so that somebody can use them, right? 
and water bottles all over the place use of especially use of plastic water bottles so i've been doing this um, you know going around to classrooms and telling children that if you have lost a water bottle uh, try and locate it and take it back home don't leave it because at the end of the year we are left with uh, you know big boxes full of water bottles and some are as expensive as tupperware tupperware is quite expensive and what happens is if the children do not reuse this stuff they go back home and tell the parents i've lost the water bottle parents don't pressurize them they just get them another bottle so that's not the sustainable way of life so we have to make the children aware that everything that they do uh, is going to have an impact on their future so i think that is something we all need to do uh, not wasting paper even the teachers if they are making some chart uh, on for the soft boards and all they need to reuse the charts that were there already because one side you've used but on the other side maybe you can reuse them so these are things that i think we should talk about a lot more uh, children even littering they throw things around uh, making the environment dirty that's also not the right way so awareness creating awareness among the students is very very important yeah actually Thank when you're you. talking about uh, water bottles i just go back to my uh, school days uh, that is about uh, 50 years back when uh, we uh, i don't think i heard the word sustainable i mean that was not in our vocabulary at all in those days uh, we didn't know what it was about now, but when i think about it you know i don't know whether uh, my parents uh, i mean we came from a middle class family so uh, we lived life uh, frugally and in the sense uh, we knew the value for money and every time uh, the water bottle strap would break uh, my mother felt okay now that she had to buy me a new water bottle so instead she made a cloth bag you know where i because the strap had gone so just the bottle was put in in this cloth bag uh, the shape of the water bottle itself and i used to take it to school and of course my elder sister she would say that she wouldn't want to walk with me into in school because she was ashamed that i was taking this cloth bag uh, with the water bottle in it so it's really strange like um when i say that you know we didn't hear about we didn't know about what was sustainability at that point of time and today it is so and i uh, i mean my mother is no more but uh, at that point of time she did what she did so it's really interesting uh i just uh, sani i'd like to add one more point that uh, comes yes, to my mind is we must always also encourage the children not to waste energy uh, when i walk around the classrooms and i see that sometimes the children have gone to the uh, to the playground or they've gone for some activity there is no teacher in the class but the lights and fans are always on so this always is something on, that yeah. teachers must practice with their students and teach them that you must it's criminal to waste energy so you must uh, get into the habit there should be somebody who, as a monitor maybe you know who has whose duty will be to switch off the fans and the lights and it uh, it should be given as a very uh, responsible role that the children will enjoy doing this you know so i think that's another thing that we can encourage in the schools yes ma'am even i have noticed every time we leave our classes our fans and lights are always on but unless it comes from within us to turn them off and then leave the classroom we have to keep enforcing them upon our classmates yeah, even the newspapers which are thrown yes, around yes ma'am they're all paper planes yeah, now yeah. so that has to stop so let's hope after danak that uh, the children this awareness is created we are doing it in our day to day uh, school life but i suppose danak is making it more uh, obvious yeah. for one of our design projects i think a couple of people from our design class used our yearbooks and since there were so many left over and even at my place i have like three yearbooks from school so i'm wondering in all our houses we have so many waste yearbooks and only in the design room was it converted into something else and i noticed that they were stacks of books from 2018 and the years before that yeah yes i saw them making flowers and all out of it like cones so i was happy that at least they were you know being uh, used yes ma'am since this forum is to create awareness about sustainable designs i'm sure the audience members do have some queries i would like to open the session now for the audience to ask their questions you can raise your hand or put the question in the chat box Please mention the panelist's name to whom you wish to ask the question. 
ma'am, there's already uh, one question directed to Alka, ma'am. It says, uh, ma'am, can we know more about organic colors which you are using in your organization? So, am, am I audible? Yes, yes ma'am. So uh, we started with indigo, which, uh, which was a native craft. But then uh, we ventured into other natural dyes like... Uh, we did a collection uh, of Ayurvastra. Uh, Ayurvastra, we did, like, it was a med medicinal series. And uh, uh, so there we had uh, Haldi, uh, Indian matter, and, uh, like, purest, uh, like, uh, uh, indigo plus uh, Nashfal. So, so these three, are, which are locally available. Uh, so, turmeric, Indian matter, and... Uh, uh, in the and now we use other natural dyes which are locally available like in Aravli we we get those Brazilian woods so that gives you a very good uh, pink peach color like in it, all the materials all the fabrics the color differs and we use babool uh, like we've experiment we've done tremendous research and development and uh, we are, but the color fades, so we have a limited audience. But like the Ayurvastra was taken away by, uh, like it was purchased by Paro Buddha. So, uh, so there are limited audience, but yeah, slowly and steadily, uh, people are getting aware of the environment, buy less, uh, and it, it become a part of yourself, your. Um, like time schedule every day you should wear because it's less harmful for the environment so yeah. so natural Man, colors are not uh, loud they are like very aesthetically very good uh, like i find them very uh, appealing to eyes and so anxiety like all the natural dyes have different qualities to it Ma'am, do you think wearing this has some psychological effect on our minds as well as on our bodies? Yeah, like indigo, it um, like if you, if you're very hyperactive, you should wear indigos more often. So, and uh, if you have uh, like if your skin very sensitive, you should wear turmeric uh, more often. So it's like we have a whole chart with us. So we tell the people. I'd love to see this chart, ma'am. I didn't know the colors you wear affects your mood and body. So it, it's a, it's a, we've done tremendous research on it. It's like mm -hmm. it depends on your path with the dosh. Like every body uh, chemical has, like every body is made up of these. And like I'm very hyperactive, like uh, so I have to wear indigo a lot and then whites we can wear. Like we mm -hmm. also have like, uh, you know, diet fabrics and like I, I can go on and on <laughs> please go on we'd love to hear more. i believe uh, colors really have an, uh, have an impact on your mind and your thought process that is why when we are coloring a house uh, we give a lot of importance uh, to which area, what color you're going to uh, put like on the walls. Say, uh, if it is a bedroom, I think green is a good color. It's a soothing color because when you look at nature and uh, it's greenery all around, it's very soothing for the eyes. Imagine if we had all red trees, you know, and it's a hot day <laughs> looking at a red, a red all around us, you know, we, we just go blind. So uh, God has selected these colors very carefully. When you look at the color of the sky, it's so soothing, mm -hmm. right? So I think every color has its own value. We say red, uh, if you put it in a study room, it gives you more energy and it helps you to concentrate in your uh, studies. So that is one thing. Again, uh, I don't know if I'm if, if I'm right, but this is what I've heard. Uh, in the kitchen, the yellow uh, the color should be yellow or uh, orange color because that's a color of fire. So I think all these colors have a lot of impact on our minds. Yes, ma'am. Even fast food chains, their uh, their base is this McDonald's and all of them are red and yellow. Yes. Ma'am, there's another question directed to Diti, ma'am. Uh, it says, Diti, ma'am, we are a big fan of your products. Just want to know what inspired you to create these cute products. Um, so, as a kid, um, I was a bit rebellious in nature because um, I didn't want to 
indulge in uh, stitching um you know because like you know grandmothers tell you like you should as a girl you should know how to stitch or you should know how to cook and i used to always run away i was like no i don't want to do that i want to maybe indulge more into sports or like you know do something uh, which is not girly so but uh, and also in nift i uh, i went into fashion communication which was more of a commu- uh, communication course it was advertising and uh, illustrative course and i come from a family of artists um, i'm surround i grew up uh, you know looking at my mother um, creating illustrations looking at my grandparents uh, you know creating art all the time and uh, seeing art all around me Uh, through my childhood years i think i was always inclined uh doing something with hand and uh, while i was in my college of course like you know there was this whole shift to digital age and for a very long time um i was inclined towards doing graphic design because i grew up uh, seeing graphic designing and illustrations um but it was my first internship in my college i joined uh, this fashion institu- uh, fashion brand in Opa- um, in oroville and uh, i was working as a content writer but i was surrounded with this beautiful handcrafted fabric um this you know the hand woven fabric and uh, you know i would see in the pattern cutting room there'd be like you know the patterns will be cut and you know somebody stitching and all those things just made me very like i was really excited and that's when i also learned about responsible and sustainable fashion because i was writing about it mm-hmm. and uh, i saw these little tidbits of fabric lying around in my you know workspace and i started collecting those and whatever stitching i knew that time uh, uh, i created a headband for myself and uh, and i really enjoyed like you know i i found it very interesting because that's what the first thing i made by hand and i felt that it was something uh, so special that like you know when you realize the importance of creating something with hand and that was the shift for me uh, like you know because i was constantly on my laptop writing i would be uh, creating on my laptop i would be illustrating on my laptop and that stitching part became a uh, you know for me became kind of an escapade that um uh, i would be just free to do anything and i went back to college i finished my course i went into advertising but somewhere i realized that i was not satisfied and then i think somewhere those fabrics were just calling me and i went back to them and i had carried this whole pile of uh, fabric this was all fabric scraps and i opened them again and i was creating these little tic tacs for myself and my friends and uh, you know one or like one of my friends ordered from me and you know she asked me to create a collection for her and uh, it just ha- it happens on its own for me like you know i just wanted uh, to create uh, you know textile jewelry but not you know but more artsy because you know there was this uh, illustration mind which was taking over so i wanted my waste fabric to not look like waste i wanted to look more artistic and uh, that's when i started creating much many more things i started with brooch pins and then i started traveling a lot i got inspired by communities crafts people and i you know i was working with the crafts people i went into their unit and i saw that they had so much of waste fabric because you know they have these little mis like if the block print grows wrong so the fabric is just there so the little little patches were kind of a treasure for me i would just pick them up and i would come back home and i would create something out of it and uh, that was it i and uh, over time i started collaborating with brands i started colla- uh, working with fashion 
brands who have so much of fabric who create uh, as alka mentioned like you know they uh, utilize uh, because being a clothing brand you have so much waste which is going uh, you know uh, which is there so i step in there and i you know i start, uh, help them create something which is fun which is wearable and it also tells a story so for me it is like you know to for me like waste is shouldn't look like waste it should look like art and it should tell a story yes ma'am ma'am so what are your accessories actually that you make for me uh, we create um, like you know brooch pin so for my first brooch pin was a frida kahlo brooch pin which um, me and my mother stitched and then later on uh, i started uh, working with local women so i taught them how to you know uh, create these pins and uh, now i you know i'm designing and i'm working with these women and um, they handle my production and i also create neck pieces so where they are very chunky neck pieces filled with fabric and uh, all textile clad and just create different different tic tacs and they are just like wearable jewelry and uh, i also create uh, textile cushions these are art cushions which um, so a lot of my collection is inspired from my travel so i travel to kutch and uh, i met with this community maldhari community and i was really intrigued that men were wearing jewelry and i i just wanted to create that character so you know i made a turban with uh you know with the fabric and tied it so they are like puppeteers but wearable art pieces and um, then later on in during pandemic was like the most uh, one of the um, hardest times of course because that was it when in the first two months i realized that okay i think i've had the experience so uh, like you know hogya brand ka experience and i think that this was it so but uh, you know i had a team to handle and one of my friends she was discarding a lot of fabric so i collected that fabric from her and uh, i during the pandemic since we were not traveling i got uh, inspired from the animals so that's when i uh, created elephant and a bull and uh, you know the two feelings which were kind of which i was feeling during the pandemic which was a feeling of you know uh, laid uh, like laid back relaxation also relaxed trying to feel relaxed but also like a bull like i wanted to fight those feelings move forward and that's when my you know the bull inside me kind of i feel like ignited and i wanted to create a bull so that was the two thing uh, th- those were the two animals i was uh, really inspired and those were like my pandemic collection and it also gave uh, you know it kind of i feel it it was so special because that time i was able to keep my like you know for my women i was able to keep their employment so um, that really helped and uh, during the pandemic we also created this uh, huge uh, uh, this um, art installation which is a home installation i'll just show it to you it was a a, a totem which it, it was like a co- combination of the two animals which was the elephant and the bull so we created the whole totem using the waste fabric and the waste stuffing so me and my mother we kind of brick the whole waste form which we collected from a uh, from a furniture artist and uh, we brick them together and we made a muda and then we piled like made a pillar out of it and then we made the two animals and you know it became our home accessory so we can like 
uh, you know the it can be dismantled and used as a poof to sit on so very interesting and so very inspirational uh, the stuff that i can see on the screen are really so so cute yeah i'm so glad shweta you have showed us because then we can relate yeah. to what she was speaking you know exactly. yes yeah, so i was wanting to know what exactly she was doing and these pictures what you are showing us now you know uh, makes it more realistic for us too and i think for the children also it's a take home that they can you know think about it and do the same thing really great didi you can come to the airport yes and the story about uh, collecting <laughs> i would have uh, to <laughs> yeah the story about collecting fabric and making something uh, just reminded me of my mom uh, she used to collect all the fabric like you know that we used to wear like all the Uh, t-shirts and dresses and all that and you not know, so she used to collect some of them and she would cut them out into um you know squares and round uh, and then she would stitch them all together make quilts quilts yeah so yeah and you know uh, she once told me when i asked her remember why are you doing this she said this is uh, memories you know these are all memories yeah. all my children are growing older so every fabric that she had used has a story So years later, when I used to look at that, like especially after my marriage, and you know, I would look at that quilt and see, okay, this was a frock I was wearing when I was in this particular standard, and so many memories are connected to it. So I think uh, it's such a beautiful way to do things, right? Yeah, there's one question I'd like to ask, actually, both of you, is that you're empowering uh, these local uh, and you know, making these local craftsmen. So how do you uh, how do you tap these uh, resources? Uh, I mean, how do you get them, uh, you know, to do what you would like them to do? Is it that they go through a special training, or that you have heard that they are good, uh, you know, with their hands, or what is it that uh, you know draws you towards them and you're able to empower them? Yeah, Alka, ma'am, you could tell us since you are. Uh, ma'am, we uh, like the printers. Uh, they are already skilled. Like they are the indigenous uh, uh, community. so uh, we've trained a set of women uh, like um, like the dari uh, the women who we dari so we uh, train so we have women like 100 people we have in house and we have like a set of 30 30 30 women over the years we have given them uh, tremendous trainings uh, like um, so we uh, uh, so actually they come like this uh, we give them trainings uh, they come like 50 60 but actually they remain is only like um, these are like very recent <laughs> shweta <laughs> oh i i didn't know so yeah all these are also natural dyes but uh, shweta do you have the reeki picture kya uh yeah i'll go i'll try to get it by the time you continue i'll, I'll search So yeah, ma'am, we give them very aggressive, intensive training, and there are only few women who then stay with us. Like we give training to a uh, lot of people, but the, our training is very uh, difficult because we have we we are catering to national, international market. So, but uh, we pay them well, so they sustain. Like we have women for over ten, twelve years. Uh, women, like a set of women, we have. So, uh, ma'am. So it's like that. They have to undergo a very uh, tough procedure with us because we have to keep our standards high. We tell them to uh, believe in yourself, and uh, you can be a like a earning member of the family, like a serious earning member of the family. And What about you, Diti? How do you uh, tap these resources? Um, when I started, it was the most uh, difficult thing. because um first like my only experience in fashion was like you know when i had worked in my uh, internship and then later on i was actually just in an advertising world and when i started my brand i was creating pieces by myself i mean it, i was in my room and my mother would do little bit of stitching and i would go to my friends place and um uh, you know i'll ask their mothers like you know do you know this stitching i would like to know this stitch like you know so all of that and sometimes i'd be question like you come from a fashion college how do you not know how to stitch 
<laughs> I said, you know what? I I know how to market, but I I'm sorry, but I want to learn how to stitch. So that was the thing. And initially, it was actually for me. I was training myself. I was uh, like, you know, doing these basic stitches, and I created pieces initially all by myself. And uh, later on, when I had to create, you know, like as the orders. like you know they started coming in and i had to get some help um so i started asking around locally and you know like house help so you know my house help would see me working and she like you know my daughter likes to stitch and they'll uh, send in their daughters and then i'll be sitting with them and teaching them and you know and also my pieces they don't have very uh, complicated stitch it if you know i i tell them that you know if i can stitch you can stitch too that is my first thing so i feel it's like anybody can stitch <laughs> so, um uh, like uh, in, so yeah like in and uh, in the starting i worked with whole lot of women they came they went and um, there was this one woman she um worked as a household worker she used to cook uh, in some household and she got to know that you know i create products and she came to my house and i asked her what she knew and she hardly knew how to stitch but she was interested in stitching it's like okay so um then i made her join a stitching school and she would like learn over there and i think she just wanted to leave the household work because it was taking a toll on her body and uh, she was just interested in stitching and now she's become the most important person in my brand because she creates the neck pieces so she's the one who creates all the textile neck pieces and she's become so smart because i have to just tell her okay you know one layer two layer okay the chandelier so now she knows and she uses some them her own creativity that you know she'll come to me and uh, just show something so she now has her own machine she stitches her own clothes she you know even uh, she would tell me that you know i utilize this fabric which was waste and i've created something of this kind so i think with uh, for me um like you know like alka we've not done the whole training per se but it i think it was during interactions and communication the idea of sustainability and the uh, training has uh, you know gone with this women and it's been a very uh, organic journey for me very uh, you know that it's just happened so that i've met these women and they've become part of my team and they've they some have stayed some have left and yeah and some people who have left they you know, like you know they've made a great pieces with me and uh, so yeah it's that's how um i work with them. where are you located i'm based in delhi delhi okay so you must be providing to delhi hat and all these places i uh, <laughs> regularly put up in dastkar Dastkar, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Alka ma'am, can you please do the dastkar every year? We are for dastkar mela to come Bangalore. <laughs> yeah, yes. we are there at uh, Ambara, Ambara, uh, Jaya Mal, yeah, Bangalore, yeah. opposite yeah. Ulsu Lake. Ulsu Lake, Ulsur I know. Lake, yeah. Yes, I yeah. know the shop. So really. we, they have lovely things. Yeah. so we had stopped at the top floor but uh, after pandemic we have slowed it down now again we'll uh, put okay. up the stock over there i stay very close to ambara so oh. so she'll have all bad things because now we were not we were unable to <laughs> give us okay no, she was very upset <laughs> because you know post uh, pandemic we uh, we were doing b2b and b2c like direct to consumers and to white label uh, but then post pandemic we started doing more of white label like uh, we are working with anita dongre uh, fab india so because the sustainability is safe because uh, after pandemic we were also scared of uh, finances and like i have uh, almost 200 people with me and 
so i started doing more of uh, like you know white label and the pictures uh, which shweta showed uh, these are like uh, after 10 years uh, till 10 years we were doing all casual wears like day to day uh, wear or only on cotton majorly high woven stuff after 10 years we uh, showcased the luxury range in lakme fashion week but then uh, in which we had incorporated silks and embroidered local embroidery uh, danka work and of mewar region but then pandemic ha- happened and now we again uh, like now we are again like it's getting better the it's, market and everything that's good yeah <laughs> ma'am what's danka work uh, danka it's a um, it's a, uh, it used to be worn um, by aristocrats like uh, uh, you have rajputi poshaks no yeah so uh, we have gold and silver uh, square metallic uh, uh, work on their poshaks so it's a very mm-hmm. traditional and very um, fine um, it's a robust kind of um, uh, embroidery but it's very um, um, like it's very costly because it's done with the uh, silver and gold but now we we can do it with metal also is it something similar to what we call zardozi work is is it same uh, it's done on danka but metal used is gold and silver ma'am we have a video presenting alka ma'am's printing process can we have that this is all shweta shweta kaun sa dikha <laughs> अच्छा <laughs> 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 Actually, it is uh, this what Shweta was showing. It's not mud resist. It's uh, tar. Like uh, so, people in Akola they practice it. Uh, it's not good for the environment and it's not good for their health. They boil the tar and then they fermented when people were facing a lack of uh, like there was no water drought during drought days. So they practice. so that's why when we when we went we had uh, introduced again uh, dabu printing so it's it's a, it's kind of wrong video sorry okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah mom someone in the audience wants to know the name of your organization again avran avran means covering like uh, so avran so avran is because it's mean covering like water sky everything is blue so and we started as blue uh yes ma'am uh dithi ma'am this is a question for you if someone wanted to start small businesses with a few unique designs do you think they should stick to limited designs or they should take customized orders can you please share your experience i still uh, uh face difficulty with that um on, to be honest um but i try to maintain a balance between the two um you know whenever a customized order comes um i always see what is the kind of customization a customer is also looking for you know if it really feels that you know i think it's also so important to know what you yourself are like you know so if it just doesn't feel right i give it a bit of time but um, i think i would uh, probably just uh, ask them to like you know or maybe just pass it on to a designer who would do a better job than me but i feel like uh, you know sometimes i also don't want to leave my artistic Oh, ability, and I, 
I think as a designer, you have to also keep coming with new things. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, the way the designing world is and the way I feel when and we live in a digital age, we live on Instagram when there's something new is happening all the time. And uh, I think being an artist and being a designer, I'm trying to kind of balance the two all the time. So we're always creating something new. There's always something new is like, you know, happening in the studio with like, you know, we started from a brooch and then we went on to creating totems and home accessories. So always go, uh, good to keep uh, doing something new. But uh, I think uh, we're also designers and, uh, you know, we're living, uh, we are also catering to customers. It's always nice to even listen to them and uh, mm -hmm. what they would want. So uh, I think as a business person and an, as an entrepreneur, you have to see what they need as well. So, mm -hmm. yes, I think the, always that balance is needed. So mm -hmm. I would not uh, go entirely that, okay, I'm creating for people all the time. I would want to create for myself and then present to my clientele. Yes, ma'am. With the consumer market, does it de uh, demand more of limited your limited items or customized items? Actually, limited items. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, because they're able to uh, connect to that. Yes, that's coming to, uh, because that's also naturally coming to me. So, so you're almost like forming a bridge will... between the two worlds. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Alka, ma'am, in what ways can we increase public awareness of our ecological footprints? Like uh, mindfully shopping and uh, like uh, buying less of synthetic and, uh, you know, not, like, I'm not saying not to go to Zara and all, but <laughs> buy more local, you, just, you should just think like, uh, you should give a lot of thought process on yourself, like for your each and every action, uh, it should be aligned, like it should be in harmony uh, with the environment. So, uh, so, right from this age if you all will think i don't know like the whole world will get so much better because it's uh, like you, you people are so young and you people are like we are talking about it is a good step and uh, like uh, like like in everyday practice like taking uh, water bottles as ma'am said like your own water bottles and your own carry bags and uh, when you shop, just think and shop. That is like you you should not be like buy randomly anything and everything. And encourage uh, local artisans and all like you know, that that would be great. I think youngsters must also be told or you know this awareness must be created in them. The brands mm -hmm. like Zara and all are actually harming the environment a lot. Because they keep changing their fashion design, their designs, the fashion, you know, and so they, you know, they uh, make, they tell youngsters yeah. that, you know, you need to change your style of dressing, you need to change. So children keep on going, people keep on going and buying more and more clothes, you know, so that is also not actually right. So that is an awareness I think we need to create. Yes, please. Ma'am, if you see their practice, then you will say, oh my God, like, if you see the practice, so... Uh... I think that also comes because it's in fast fashion. They're actually creating every two yes. months, every three months. But fast and fashion is dangerous. Yes. So I think we're also like just putting it in landfill and yeah. It's dangerous not only for the environment, but for our pockets as well, for our finances. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for the parents also. <laughs> Ma'am, this question will be directed to both Diti Ma'am and Alka Ma'am. Uh, how lucrative is the future of students who are creative and inclined towards art and design? Diti, you answer because um, you speak so well. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I feel uh, there is definitely a lot of scope uh, for uh, you know students uh, to actually come in art and design. I mean, me being a uh, young designer and to make uh, a space. you know for myself in such a huge world of fashion and art um, like i won't say i'm there but i think it's it's been it's been good like i enjoy i'm able to enjoy it and it gives me by the end of the day a peace of mind so i feel it it is it's definitely there and i think like uh, more people are like you know if they are you know they push to come to this sort of a feel uh, greater uh, great it is mom could you tell us more about your experience at nift um actually i, I you know at nift i was more into digital art and uh, like illustrations i was creating a lot of uh, illustrations and uh, i doodle a lot i create uh, comics i was part of a, uh, a women comic book also during my college days um it was called drawing the line um which was published uh, when uh, delhi nirbhaya case happened so i um yeah look i am also like truly inclined towards illustrations so for my through my college days i was i was just uh, an illustrator person i never saw myself what i'm currently doing um it was much later like in 2016 2017 uh you know uh what i'm doing now happened and but in nift i think um, i really kept myself open i was open to experience it all i wanted to um my college was uh, you know it it was it was in mumbai but it was not in main bombay it was on the border so um so i wanted to ex- so i traveled from you know i had shifted from delhi to bombay so you know there's always a debate like what what is better delhi or bombay you know so this whole thing but yeah i was i wanted to experience bombay and i was in college and i wanted to experience bombay so i on my second year of uh, you know college i i took up some jobs in main bombay and i would travel i just i took up so many different jobs and projects and you know i met so many people and i feel like those experiences have actually stayed with me whatever in you know the third year internship i did you know the second year work experience i took or the you know final project i did i did my final project under a production designer and i worked in as like you know um at an interior design project i worked on a film set and a promo so it was completely different but i took that experience i didn't want to shut myself to like just beforehand like okay this is not something i want i took that experience and then i took a decision that okay this is the thing i don't want to do i went into advertising field took that experience i left that field and so i think i've taken so many different these different sorts of <laughs> uh, you know projects that uh, they've become part of my learning which i now use in my brand building actually sanya i think uh, as a principal of the school i can answer this question regarding design you know yes, we've introduced design as a subject in the school as a skilled yes. subject in the school and that and that i feel has been really wonderful because children who have been good in art and who have interest in de- uh, design we have paved that path for them yeah. you know so for in grade 11 and 12 they've taken design as a subject so they are open to uh, the the teachers uh, tell them what you know they have to study in design and which are the institutes that they can uh, they can um, go to so i think even at the school level that awareness has been created which was not there when we were in school but now it is introduced as a skill subject and i feel 
I, I feel really very happy when Shweta tells us, you know, at the end of the year that so many children have got into NIFT, have got into NID, got into a school of art. So as a school, we feel very happy that we have paved that uh, path for them, which the parents would have probably not encountered. Not, yeah, true. You know, because every parent wants their child to be an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. But this field of art is also very good and, you know, you can really excel in it. So as a school also, we feel that we have contributed a lot and introduced and we must thank CBSE also for having introduced this subject. And we have brought upon the subject to the, uh, we have showed the subject to the children. We have given them that avenue where they could pursue the subject it as a skill subject and children have gone on that path. So that is very, very gratifying for us as well as the art and craft department. Yes. I think that's very important. That's yeah. No, ma'am, ma ma my kids are in DPS so therefore, but DPS Bangalore is very cool. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's way more cooler school. Like, uh, like y'all, because I don't see anyone, like it's new, it's comparatively new, but uh, you people are doing great. Like you people are showing them the ikigai. Most of the people, they don't know what they are doing. Like what, like uh, now I'm 40 plus. So most of the people I meet, they are not happy in what they do or they don't know what they want to do. So, so it's great, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much. I completely agree. Like, I think when I was in my school, like, I mean, uh, my design training definitely started in class eight, but like, I never experienced the art side in my school. Like, and it's so like when I was approached by Shweta and I double checked, like, is, is this really a school? Like, who's doing this? <laughs> like sort of a program i mean how like how <laughs> so yeah it's it's really nice to hear and so no, no doubt the art department as as, as i said in the beginning they've gone beyond the classroom yeah. and that's what makes it yes. so great yeah that's true yeah Dizzy, ma'am, could you tell us more about your preparation you said you started from eighth grade so can you tell us about how your preparation and the process you went through? um so I used to go um, to a drawing class. So, you know, my um, I used to do a lot of drawing. And also, I feel, uh, you know, one thing which was there with me was that I was coming from an artist family. Mm -hmm. So I saw a lot of art around me, as I mentioned before. Like, you know, I would see my mother drawing all the time. And... Uh, now also like you know she's a children's book illustrator and i used to see my grandparent who will he, he, he like you know he was he's an architect so i used to come back to home and i used to see these huge maps house maps and uh, i used to go to my grandparents house and you know i used to see these uh, models and so all these things really so i was constantly observing these things and I'm you know when you're just growing up seeing them so in eighth class I was in this drawing class mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then over time in 10th or something I started going to this other artist studio and uh, he used to just like you know send me out of the studio and he used to just ask me to observe people mm -hmm. and draw them and one thing which I noticed in my entrances and in my training was observing and being aware. Like, you uh, you know, that's what... And I think even when we are talking about sustainability, and even when Alka also mentioned in the beginning that it is like yoga, it is meditation which actually helps you tap into your mind that you're aware you 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 know it's like you're being conscious you're aware of your surroundings and that's what uh, you know art helped me like you know all these trainings helped me with like you know I was drawing people I was sketching like if I had to uh, do human drawing I'm sketching mm -hmm. them and it helped me being fearless like you know I mean like in the starting, when you're outside sitting in the park and sketching people, it, I used to just, you know, my body used to string. I'm like, okay, what am I doing? But then slowly it helped me open up. Like, you know, I'm sitting in the park and I started sketching people like more. So it, it helps you express more uh, 
fearlessly i think that's what art also helps you with so that was the training and uh, nift just happened and uh, i was you know in 11th i was again preparing for all those exams and trances and uh, like you know the usuals nid srishti nift and uh, i think nift had the course which um, i wanted and i went for it because now in your design training did you find one particular topic that was difficult or did you find one sketching assignment that was hard or i used to always uh, uh, enjoy sketching definitely for me uh, you know the uh the literature was very difficult so you know what um, so we we had this topic pr which now i feel is very important yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah like you know pr and uh, even um, laws which we had this topic of uh, you know uh, so yes all those topics which were like you know literature that time for me like now i you know go back to them because of course like when you're building a brand you have to know it all <laughs> yes yes ma'am so you didn't tell us your verdict what is it delhi or mumbai finally after the college oh it's both <laughs> <laughs> yeah and ma'am you also mentioned how uh, you had a pandemic collection and you gave a lot of employment so that was something i found really interesting because the pandemic's a time when a lot of people lost jobs Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So before we sign off, I would like to know from our guests what advice would they give to aspiring designers like me who would go on to become professionals? Can both Alka ma'am and Diti ma'am give us their advice? You have to be passionate and persistent, like um, and uh, like focused, discipline. So all these things. Uh, and can do anything like i belong to a very humble background like my uh, uh, uh my mother is a retired ips officer so, i have never given nift an id and all because uh, my elder brother he was iit and now an ips so he thought like uh, these things like uh, so I, when i got like we were staying at jaipur and this icd happened so we were the first batch so i like a rebellious child i went to icd then i got married in jaipur then i started this journey so what i'm trying to say is like there there is a path everywhere so it depends upon you you have to find your way and be persistent towards it yes ma'am the thing ma'am can we have some advice from you <laughs> i think i know really second alka uh, definitely i think that is the thing uh, um you have to be persistent you have to be just going forward be fearless you know just it's okay things will happen you know people will be stopping you or they would not believe in you but i think you have to be you have to believe in yourself and yes. know that okay and even if it is wrong i think you would realize it that it was wrong <laughs> you know um but yes i think um, being unafraid and just move forward that is that is the way yes ma'am thank you ma'am those were some truly informative words i now request our vice principal lovely ma'am to propose the vote of thanks Thank you, Sanya. Uh, the very fact that uh, our guests uh, found it amazing that a school is hosting a program like Dhanak speaks volumes about it. And for this, I must first of all thank the art department for their brilliant idea of coming up with something like Dhanak. And I must thank our principal, Mrs. Bopana, for backing and supporting the department in every aspect. And uh, you know, uh, and I thank the students, the teachers. the head of the department um, shweta shukla along with each and every member of her team for making dhanak possible and for inspiring the students to put in all the hard work and creativity into making dhanak a reality 
I would also like to thank our audience for taking out time to be with us this evening and the participants who are going to take part in the various competitions and workshops of Dhanak 22. I wish the team all the very best. Thank you everybody for your time. And I'm, I'm really hope, hoping that, the, I'm sure actually, not hoping, I'm absolutely sure that Dhanak 22 is going to rock it and we are going to do a great job. Thank you, Diti and Alka for taking your time and being with us today. I'm sure the audience, the students and the teachers who are with us today, uh, will be taking uh, will be taking a lot away from this conversation. It's been wonderful listening to uh, both of you, and we've got so many ideas and so many things that we learned uh, about art. And uh, thank you so much. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. And Sunny, you've done a brilliant job. <laughs> Yes, I'm just wondering, I'd like to request both Alka ma'am and Diti ma'am to create virtual workshops for us anytime. Yeah, you can come over to Udaipur, we have a guest house, you can stay here. Yes. With that, I'm come certainly to looking forward to that. <laughs> and Diti, you must come. We have I will. Tremendous, tremendous wastes. I'm so I'm so glad that DP has actually connected both of us. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. With that, we come to the end of this opening ceremony and commence seven days of fun activities and beautiful displays. Do catch us on social media to get your daily updates. Thank you. Thank you. Kanan Bankana. मैंने ठीक बोला कहना